Hello my fellow page turners and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat who reads, and today I want to talk about why I love hard case crime. Now, for those of you who don't know, hard case crime is a book imprint that specializes in a lot of your neo-noir pulp mystery thriller type stuff. They kind of got their start in reprinting old pulp thriller novels from like the 50s and earlier, actually probably 60s and earlier, I'm not even sure how far back they go with them, that have gone out of print for whatever reason. They will take them, re-release them with the credits of course going back to the original authors and make these beautiful new pulp style covers for them. Um, if you've heard of Hard Case Crime but you're not sure where, it's probably because of Stephen King. He's written three for the imprint, two of which I have because I really enjoyed, one being Joyland and the other one being Later. Now, most of my people on watch this have probably heard of Stephen King, I would hope, and have probably heard of these books, but they all kind of have this same little pattern going on on the side. The red bold font for the title, the author's name in bold black, and that little yellow band up at the top, and... Joyland was probably the first book I read from Hard Case Crime, but they are also very good about putting little synopsis in the back about a couple of other books from other authors in the from the imprint. And it was from there that I found out that another author I really enjoyed, Michael Crichton, had wrote a bunch of novels that were published under a name the name John Lang and have been published them here. And I've got a bunch of those, too. I think there was eight, seven, eight. There's eight total, and here's two of them right here. This is Odds On and Easy Go, which, that's a neat cover, don't you think? Um, I would show you all the covers of these I have, but some of them um, go into a more risque category. I mean, a couple of these push it a little bit but not too bad some of them have the very scantily clad women on the cover or the conveniently placed hands I guess would be another way of saying it and I mean I don't think any kids are watching but just in case I don't want to push any envelopes on that but from there I eventually picked up Max Allen Collins Corey novels I've talked a little bit about Corey before um Corey, the character, was a Vietnam War veteran who came home and found his wife in bed with another man and doesn't do anything then, just goes back over to the man, the next man's house the next day to try to talk through this whole situation. The man makes a smart-ass remark at him while he's underneath his car working on it, and Corey kicks the jack out, kills the guy, and of course is eventually taken up by the broker as a hitman, a hired hitman. The series has run for 16 books, I believe. Something like that. 16 books. And I've got three of them I can show here because I think these are probably the three cleanest. This is, I think, book four, Corey's Cut. Like I said, you can kind of get what they do with these covers. I mean, we have Corey in the black. And the one I recently read, Corey's Blood, which was, I guess, the last one now, but that's the one thing about this series is that the chronological order is so messed up now because they originally wrapped it up and then they wrote a book that was supposed to conclude it, but then they went back and wrote a book that was set before it, and then they wrote a bunch of books kind of set in between other books, and now this recent book is supposed to be the book after the last book that wraps everything up. And as confusing as it can be chronologically, I hope Max Collins continues to write these. I love the Corey novels. I've enjoyed them all at some point or another. They're all just, they're all really just pulpy action thrillers. And that's the thing about some of these, even the newly published ones, because yeah, they did a lot with like reprints, but some of these are brand new novels by the same author or in some cases books that were just never published that they came across manuscripts and published them there's a ton of them like that and i think there's like 130 of them now 
I might be over on that. I'm not exactly sure how many there are. I haven't read all of them, of course, but I'm just showing off some of them I have. And some of them they have multiple stories in. Like this one here from Donald Westlake has actually two short novellas in it. This is double feature. I don't know if you can read that. That font's a little funky. But <laughs> I really enjoyed this one too. I'm And then all this was kind of started by a guy named Charles Arday, who actually published two novels for Hard Case under the name Richard Alias. <laughs> Get it? Alias. <laughs> and then he published a couple under his own name. One of them was the novelization of The Nice Guys, which I loved the movie and I really enjoyed the book as well. And then the last one I want to show is 50 to 1, which was the 50th book published by the imprint. And what's great about this is there's 50 chapters. Each chapter is titled over a previous book. So like the 50th chapter is called 50 to 1 and so on. And they have a little thing in here with all these different covers in it. And yeah, I can show you. These pages aren't too bad, but there's nothing too bad about any of those. But they've published so many of them. I haven't read all of them I'd like to read. Um, there's another one of the Michael Crichton, John Lang ones I haven't read yet that I would have shown you. But it's one of those conveniently placed hands covers I mentioned earlier so I just really love this because a lot of these books or some of them anyway the ones that are reprints you wouldn't be able to find anywhere unless you like found them in like your grandpa's attic or some back corner of a used bookstore somewhere so it's fun that they can bring these out to people now to read under new covers and whatnot and make them look a lot prettier and for a nice price too they're all pretty decently priced and it also is nice because it's a nice look back at that era what was like the big thing like mystery thrillers were a lot different in that era and they all like i said have them pulpy covers that just look so cool <laughs> but yeah that's all i really want to talk about i really love this imprint i've had a couple i didn't love but that's true of anything and some of them are a little bit too much for me when I read them. But, and like I said, you can go to their website, hardcasecrime.com. You can see like all these covers because these are gorgeous covers, all of them. There isn't a bad cover among them. The cover artists they have are phenomenal. And you can see some of those I didn't dare show on a YouTube channel. But that's my video for today. Not much of a video, I know, but... What about you guys? Have you read any of the Hard Case Crime imprint besides the Stephen King too? Because that's what everybody's read. Do any of these sound good? Do any of these look interesting to you? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep turning pages.